Hey guys, it's Dr. Joni Yakel, your natural healthcare practitioner, and I want to welcome you to video number three in our functional medicine video series. Today we're going to be talking about hormones, we'll be talking a little bit about the thyroid, the adrenals, of course, the um, reproductive glands, all of these having such a huge influence over how we feel every day, not just physically, um, but also mentally, emotionally. Um, I really hope that you've got a lot so far out of our first two videos. We talked about inflammation a few weeks ago. We also covered uh, blood sugar issues. If you missed those, be sure to go back, check your emails. They'll be in there. And don't forget, two weeks from now, I'm going to be talking about digestive health. So again, if you struggle with any kind of digestive disorder, whether it's things like heartburn or indigestion, stomach aches, um, nausea or maybe it's bloating. A lot of people struggle with um, autoimmune diseases such as colitis and Crohn's, um, even leaky gut. This will be the uh, video series for you. That'll be coming up in two weeks as I'm talking about digestion. But today we're going to be diving in, talking more in depth about hormones and hormone health. And this is something I see on a daily basis in my practice, whether it's male or female because so many of us are under chronic stress and we're juggling so many responsibilities every single day that over time it just wears, it wears on our endocrine system. And as our endocrine system gets more and more tired, more fatigued, starts to get depressed. And as that happens, as the, as the glands start to get more tired, well, they stop producing adequate amounts of hormones. So whether we're talking about um, thyroid hormones or whether we're talking about cortisol in, in our adrenal glands, or maybe we're talking about estrogen and progesterone or low testosterone. And, you know, the honest truth is, is we're seeing this, at least I'm seeing this in my office more and more frequently at a younger and younger ages. And I think it's just because the stress is starting earlier and our coping mechanisms maybe aren't, aren't uh, up to par or where they could be, at least with our stress resilience. So we're bombarded by stress and we don't have the tools and the strategies to actually manage and to navigate the stress. And then so what happens is our endocrine, our glands, basically, they start to burn out. And when the glands burn out, well, we start to have hormonal imbalances. So this can look like perimenopause um, for women. Maybe their cycle is starting to get uh, really wonky. It's starting to get off. Um, it can show up in men and having lower testosterone levels. In both cases, they're just having less passion, less desire. And then, of course, it rolls over to our mental emotional state. So we're having more anxiety, more depression, more moody, more irritable. It starts impacting our sleep patterns. It impacts our libido. We start feeling more tired. Uh, in essence, we just start to feel more and more uh, burnt out. And, um, you know, a term that I usually like to, to refer to this as is, is we end up being wired and tired. It's almost like our system is in a state of high alert and anxiety all the time. And at the same time, we're exhausted. So we're, we're dragging out of bed every morning, needing coffee just to get up and get going. And then on the other end of the day, it's like we can't shut off. So now, now we're requiring things to help shut down our, our senses and turn our mind off so we can get back, you know, get back to sleep and just pray for a, you know, a good night's sleep so that we can feel rested the next morning. But of course, we wake up feeling exhausted again. Um, and so much of this is just chronically being driven by the high stress lifestyles. And unfortunately, we just don't have good strategies for helping people manage their hormones. And the reality is, is, you know, we're finding clinics and doctors all over the place selling um, hormone replacement and even referring to, to bioidentical hormones as if, uh, you know, as a natural solution to this. But the reality is, is putting synthetic hormones into the body is far from natural. And while I, I do believe that there is a time and a place for that, we want that to be the last option. We want to have exhausted all other possibilities and true actual natural approaches to balancing the hormones before we have to fall back on any kind of hormone replacement. You know, the long-term studies on these are, are either non-existent or there's turning out that there are long-term problems. We know that it increases likelihood of cancer. We're suspecting that it increases likelihood of heart disease, heart attack, strokes. And I mean, these are two of the biggest killers in our country today. And that's without counting what uh, might be increased 
from our use of, of hormone replacement. So, so let's dive in. Let's talk a little bit about how the hormones work. Let's talk about how we get out of balance. And of course, let's, let's provide some solutions. Well, what can we do naturally starting today to start rebalancing the hormones so we can, in essence, like what I like to say, steward the pause. It's like the longer we can put off um, andropause for men and me, uh, uh, menopause for women, the healthier we're going to be long term because as soon as these hormones start shutting down as soon as we start getting decreased levels of testosterone and estrogen and progesterone our body literally starts shutting down and we start aging at a faster pace and this is not just physically but it's also our brain our brain health and we're now in fact some experts are even saying that one type or one form of alzheimer's and dementia is being driven by the lack of hormones um, or by a lack or an adequate amount of hormones in the brain, again, such as testosterone and estrogen. They're very protect protective to our health um, long term. So that being said, what can we do? Well, I think first it's like, well, where are we starting? How do we even know if we have hormone imbalance? I think for a lot of us, it, it seems to be uh, not such a subtle experience. Um, as I mentioned before, it's like women, it, they might notice they have irregular menses, but in an extreme version, we're dealing with things like fibroids and cysts and endometriosis. These are all indicators of fairly massive hormone imbalances, uh, you know, impacting our mood. So we're having mood changes. We're more irritable. We're more fatigued. We're depressed. We have anxiety. Uh, weight gain is a common sign of hormonal imbalance. Obviously, having hot flashes, waking up with night sweats, not sleeping well. You know, if you're waking up, you know, two, three, four. I've even had women in my office who are waking up six to eight times a night um, having hot flashes and feeling anxiety. And that becomes miserable. Like, life becomes a fairly miserable existence when our hormones get that out of, out of balance. Of course, it impacts us sexually. So it can be vaginal dryness. For men, they start getting erectile dysfunction and um, ejaculatory problems. Uh, brain fog, as I mentioned, it impacts our brain health. So it's like we, we don't have clarity. We're lacking focus. Uh, memory, it's like we start having a hard time remembering what we're doing or what, why did we come into this room or, uh, you know, what was that person's name? Uh, our skin our, uh, and our hair starts changing. Of course, we start losing muscle. So as the hormones start reducing, we start losing muscle mass. And there's loads of studies that are now correlating muscle mass to longevity. It's like the more we maintain muscle mass and strength, uh, the healthier we are going to be as we age. And then one, you know, another side effect is of hormonal imbalances. We're going to become more inflamed ultimately. And again, as we become more inflamed, we're going to have more musculoskeletal problems. We're going to have more joint pain. Um, and we're also going to degenerate a, a little bit faster. So we're more prone to um, arthritis and bone spurs and, and things of that nature. So let's talk a little bit briefly about how the hormones work. And I, I'd really like to simplify this as much as possible because hormones can be such a complicated thing. And I'm not saying that they're not complicated, but we don't necessarily have to look at it through that lens. So when I think of the endocrine system, I primarily think of what I refer to as the triad. So our endocrine system is all our glands. So it's our, our pituitary gland and our brain. It's our thyroid. It's the adrenals. Uh, it's the ovaries, it's the testes, like those are all endocrine glands. Our pancreas and our liver actually can, can be lumped in uh, as, as endocrine glands as well. But primarily, we think of the thyroid, the adrenals, and then the ovaries or the testes. And so we, first we've got our thyroid, and the thyroid produces a, a few different uh, hormones, primarily T4 and T3. Um, and our T4, you know, thyroid makes probably about 95% of the hormones it makes is T4, which is an inactive uh, version of your thyroid hormone. T3 is the active version. So, you know, when we think of classic hypothyroid signs, like just, you know, feeling fatigued, uh, you know, slowing down metabolism, so we're gaining weight, you know, hair loss, things of that nature, depression, those are you know, constipation, those are usually signs of a hypothyroid or a low functioning thyroid, which occurs when we're not producing enough T3. Now the thyroid actually only makes about 2% of the hormone that the thyroid makes is T3. It makes primarily T4. 
T4 has to get converted into T3 in order for us to, to feel optimal. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that uh, shortly. Down here, we've got the adrenal glands. Now, the adrenal glands also produce a lot of different hormones, uh, including things like um, adrenaline, but cortisol is the hormone that we primarily associate with the adrenals, and it is primarily our stress hormone. So anytime we experience any stress in our life, physically or mentally, emotionally, we're gonna get a surge of cortisol uh, to basically stimulate the nervous system and therefore stimulate the body as we move more into a sympathetic uh, state of being. So our body is engaged, we're ready to fight or we're, we're ready to flight. Um, another, and I mentioned this in my last talk, but another purpose of cortisol or another one of its jobs or duties is to manage blood sugar. So if we're constantly got these ups and downs in our blood sugar, then we're going to be constantly releasing cortisol to help balance out the blood sugar. So basically a high carb diet puts a lot of stress on the body as we start releasing more and more cortisol. And then finally, we've got the ovaries and we've got the testes, um, which are basically managing our reproductive hormones. So progesterone and estrogen and testosterone, just, just to name a few. Now, here's the thing. Our endocrine system is very, very intimately related. So, I mean, they are constantly communicating with each other. For instance, the thyroid is always talking to the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are always, therefore, also in communication with the thyroid. Um, equally, you could say the thyroid is talking to the ovaries and the testes, and the testes and the ovaries are, are talking back to the thyroid. And then, of course, the adrenals are talking to the ovaries and uh, the testes and, and vice versa. So there's a very intimate relationship going on between um, these glands. And the reality is, is if any single one of these glands gets overstressed or gets out of balance, is therefore going to influence the other two. So the honest truth is, is that you cannot have a thyroid problem without also having an adrenal and an ovary problem because it's going to influence those in some way. You cannot have an adrenal problem without impacting the thyroid and the ovaries and the testes. So if any one of these gets, gets hit, it's going to affect all of the others. So for instance, as we had written that out before, once one of these gets skewed, you can see how it's going to influence the other two. And just looking at this, I can tell you right now, and I'm sure that you could guess, but who of these three do you think is the most commonly influenced? Who is the most likely to be overproducing or underproducing? And in the world that we live in today, I mean, it is bar none, the adrenal glands. It's the adrenal glands that are constantly being forced to pump out cortisol. Now, when we are making such significant amounts of cortisol all the time, well, that's actually going to reduce the amounts of T3 and T4 and estrogen and testosterone and, and progesterone that we're making. So basically, there's a balance here. And the balance is really coming from the fact that all our hormones are made out of cholesterol. And, and uh, cholesterol is a limited source. We don't have an unlimited amount of that. So if we're using all our resources to make cortisol, well, yeah, our, our T4 and our T3 are going to suffer as well as the progesterone and the estrogen um, and the progesterone. So the key here is to, to really bring them all back into balance. One, finding out well, where is the primary source of this coming from. And once you find the primary source, you can actually address that one and, and just um, you know, like a domino effect is going to affect the others. Now, another thing that I had kind of alluded to earlier is there's a major player involved in our hormones that's, that's not shown here. But basically, I had mentioned earlier that our thyroid gland is making primarily T4. Now, T4 has to go to the liver in order to be converted into T3. And once it gets to the liver, it's all converted the, the T3, and then T3 is what ultimately is going to make us feel more vibrant, more passionate, uh, you know, more easily and readily losing weight, um, just really feeling more like ourselves. Like that is a big, significant job of the thyroid, and we have to have plenty of adequate levels of T3 in order for that to happen, which means we have to have a good functioning liver because about 70% of 
of all our thyroid hormone is being converted into T3 in the liver. So if the liver's not functioning optimally, well, uh, we're going to have thyroid issues, uh, and it's just not being connected to the thyroid. And in fact, this is my major beef with um, most primary care physicians only testing TSH and maybe even testing T4 to see if somebody has a thyroid problem. The problem is, is that TSH, as you can see, isn't even made in the thyroid. It's made in the pituitary gland. So if you're making adequate amounts of TSH and even possibly making adequate amounts of T4, but then it's not getting converted in the liver to T3, you in essence have a thyroid problem. It's just going undiagnosed. And I would say I have a significant amount of women who come in with all the symptoms of, of thyroid problems, uh, only to have their blood work run, and the doctor comes back and they're like, you're fine, you don't, you don't have any thyroid issues, um, only to find, in fact, I, I had a woman just recently, she'd been dealing with this for five years before she came into my office, and we did an extended thyroid panel. We test all six, seven, eight um, different labs to really find out what's going on in the thyroid, only to find out exactly. TSH and T4 were fine, T3 was totally low, so she was functioning as though she had a low thyroid, but technically it wasn't a thyroid issue for her, it's that her body wasn't detoxifying and, and um, making these hormones appropriately. The good news is, is, that, is that's a fairly easy fix. So when it comes to addressing hormones and addressing them naturally, um, you know, it, it really, I find that about 80% of the time, if we address the two primary sources of hormone imbalance, we're going to get massive results. Again, 80% of the time, I find that if we can manage, help people manage their stress and support a low carb lifestyle while detoxifying the liver, the majority of the time, that is enough to knock out most people's hormonal problems. Uh, and then, of course, if there's stuff left over after that, well, yeah, we might have to go a, bit, a little bit deeper. But so as we address the causes of hormone imbalance, um, we have to look at the, you know, the, again, one of the primary causes is our high stress lifestyle. When we are stuck in fight or flight, when we are constantly pumping out high levels of cortisol all the time, well, the result is it's going to throw off the entire endocrine uh, triad, so to speak. Those high levels of cortisol are going to eventually affect the thyroid and they're definitely going to affect the, um, the ovaries or the testes. As I mentioned before, so poor liver function. And this might just be even a genetic predisposition where the body does not detoxify appropriately or maybe the liver is just overburdened because again, we live in a very toxic world with all our pollution and all the foods we eat. It's like uh, we are bombarded by, by toxins. So again, if our liver gets backed up, so to speak, uh, and it's not detoxifying appropriately or just can't keep up, well, that's going to have a huge impact on hormones. Uh, blood sugar imbalance. I already mentioned earlier that cortisol is the primary hormone that's balancing our sugar. So again, if, if our sugar, our blood sugar is out of balance, we're eating a high carb diet, well, that's going to blow up our cortisol levels. And again, that's going to throw all the rest of the hormones out of balance. So these are the three primary things that have to be addressed whenever we're trying to balance hormones uh, naturally without any kind of hormone replacement. Of course, there are more in-depth things. So, you know, if you're one of the, you know, 10 to 20% who does not uh, recover just doing these three things, well, we might have to look a little bit deeper. It might be, there might be some gut issues. There might be some food sensitivities or leaky gut. There can be some past trauma um, that's leading to it. Uh, poor circulation, lack of exercise and movement can cause um, hormonal imbalance. Autoimmune diseases can be a major driver and have a huge impact on, um, on our hormone levels. Chronic immune issues. So if we're constantly fighting off viruses or um, infections or uh, funguses, so dealing with things like candida and um, viruses such as Epstein-Barr or herpes complex, you know, all of these can be, uh, be things like toxic burdens that impact our hormonal balance. Drugs and alcohol can have a huge impact. Uh, as I mentioned, pollution, why is the pollution impacting it? Well, one, because it's impacting liver function, but it turns out that we're polluting our world with a lot of uh, plastics that resemble estrogen. So here we are being bombarded by almost like an artificial source 
of estrogen, and then systemic inflammation. So we're chronically inflamed. That can further drive hormone imbalance. So what do we do about this? Um, you know, as I mentioned, I think that for 80% of you who are tuning in today, and this is just what I see every day in my practice, um, you know, I see a lot of both men and women struggling with hormone imbalance, just feeling burnt out, feeling exhausted. Uh, you know, the cycle might be a mess, the anxiety, the depression is off the charts, not sleeping, feeling wired, feeling tired. 80% of the time, we can uh, knock this out of the park just by following some really basic rules. Now, one, it's reducing stress. So first and foremost, I think we have to put together a bulletproof self-care program. So this means starting to manage things like our sleep. Uh, you know, Americans have been described as being catastrophically sleep deprived. We don't sleep enough. We don't go to bed early enough and we don't sleep in late enough. They primarily, ideally, we're getting at least eight hours sleeping, you know, around the hours of 10 to 6. But, you know, when we start pushing off bedtime, we start actually reducing the production of a lot of our hormones. So, you know, proper sleep is really important. Implementing uh, things like meditation and prayer. Obviously, our diet is a huge part of our self-care program. Making sure we're taking supplements that are going to help reduce and support um, stress. Community, socializing, getting out, like being around other people like us has been shown to have a dramatic impact on our ability to adapt to stress. Exercise is an enormous stress, re uh, stress reducer. Why? Because it burns a tremendous amount of all these stress hormones, all this cortisol we're pumping in our bloodstream. When we actually get out and exercise, it actually starts helping to modulate it or break that down. So again, it's helping to bring the hormones uh, back into balance. So those are all great things that we can be doing to help reduce our stress levels and putting together healthy self-care programs. Next is really zeroing in and making sure that our diet is on point. We've got to have a low-carb diet. So I highly recommend doing a paleo-based diet. So getting off uh, the grains, getting off dairy, both of which are highly inflammatory. A lot of people have food intolerances to these. Uh, intolerances to these, whether they're aware of it or not, but really getting our blood sugar under control, getting the uh, on a low carb lifestyle to give our body an opportunity to naturally reduce the cortisol levels to bring all our hormones back into balance. These two oftentimes are enough for a lot of people, but I consistently find, again, if the hormones are out of balance enough and they've been that way for long enough, we have to implement a detoxification program. So we have to give the body some liver support. I love standard process. Now there's a lot of ways to detox. Um, one of my favorites is the 28 day standard process has a new 28 day detoxification program. It's all shakes. Basically it's packed with foods and herbs to help support phase one, phase two, and phase three detoxification to basically start cleansing out uh, the liver, which is giving the body the opportunity to start functioning at a higher level when it comes to the production of our hormones. So if you remember, I mentioned early on that the liver is responsible for the production of about 70% of your T3 or your thyroid hormone. So again, if your thyroid's not functioning optimally, well, or if you're, uh, it could be coming from the liver. So we've got to get the liver uh, detoxed and cleansed. So be between the reducing the stress, and of course that can include all kinds of different body work. So adding in things like chiropractic and massage and um, acupuncture, those are all exceptional forms of self-care to help reduce um, stress. And adding in a low carb diet, it's gonna take a lot of the stress off the adrenals, um, instantly start leading to some weight loss, which again, people don't realize that fat actually functions as an endocrine gland. Our fat produces estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. So the bigger we get, the more out of balance our hormones are going to get furthermore. So, um, you know, by getting on a low carb diet, you know, most people lose between four and 12 pounds a month when I get them on a paleo or a keto based diet. And again, you know, that's just a side effect of getting healthy because what's happening is um, as the weight comes off, the hormones are going to become more and more balanced. But the 28-day detoxification, I would say that's almost mandatory just because of how profound 
uh, the hormones are influenced when the liver gets healthy. Uh, fourth, um, and this may or may not even be necessary, but this would be adding in some additional endocrine support. So there's a lot of great herbs that we can utilize like ashwagandha for stress resiliency. Licorice is great at breaking down um, cortisol levels. Things like chase tree are, are just exceptional for, for balancing out estrogen and progesterone. Tribulus is a wonderful herb for trying to boost testosterone levels. So, you know, we can add in different combinations. You know, everybody's a little bit different. We're all unique. Different herbs are going to work different for different people. I also love using glandular whole food products to help strengthen and fortify the thyroid and the adrenal over time. But really, if we want to balance the hormones and we want to do this naturally, it's, it is 90% of the time it's totally doable. And I found that a good portion of that, probably 80% of the time, we can do it just simply by implementing adequate self-care programs, getting people on um, a healthy low-carb diet, and doing a 28-day detox. And I mean, to be able to kickstart your hormones in 30 days is amazing and what we can see in 60 and 90 days can be off the charts i've seen people completely turn around both male and female um you know between 30 and, and 90 days getting them on on a uh, a hormone balancing program such as this one so uh if you are working with someone, uh, you know, I would bring this up, you know, especially if you've been considering doing some hormone replacement therapy. If you've got a natural health practitioner, you're going to want to ask them. It's like, hey, are there cleanses that I can do? Or, um, you know, can I get on a paleo-based diet? Like, what should I be doing to, to be getting my hormones balanced? If you're stuck and uh, you need some additional help, I would be more than happy to, to help you out. Feel free um, give me a call or send me an email at the office. Um, most of you know if you're getting these emails, you can just email me back and let me know you want to set up a functional medicine um, consult. And, you know, we can just dive in right away, starting to get the hormones balanced. You know, for more complex uh, cases, we can actually do all kinds of blood work and hormone testing just to find out what, the, what, what our starting place is. But like I said, 80% of the time, it's pretty simple. We manage the stress. And we, utilize, we do that utilizing some whole food endocrine support. We get the diet on spot, getting on a low carb diet, and we cleanse the liver. And uh, boom, most people notice tremendous difference within you know, 30, 60, uh, 90 days. So I hope this has been helpful. And if I can be of any service to you in uh, getting your hormones balanced, or if you know people who are struggling and they don't know what to do and they don't want to do hormone replacement or they're looking for another option, uh, you know, I think I can certainly help them out. And don't forget to stay tuned. Two weeks from now, we're going to be coming out with our digestive health video series. So again, if you're struggling with any kind of autoimmune, if you're struggling with constipation, indigestion, bloating, uh, heartburn, leaky gut, any of those, we're going to dive into that in a lot more depth. So uh, thank you again for joining me. And I hope this is helpful. And I hope to see you soon.